Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. Today we are going to talk about rigging and fishing. A bit of a deadly weapon in the Z-Man range, but it's also a bit of a secret weapon amongst our pro team, so they'll probably shoot me for, for talking about this one. But this plastic has accounted for mangrove jack, jewfish, barramundi, bass, a whole stack of different species. It's also excellent spinnerbait trailer for Murray cod and those sorts of species as well. And it is the four inch turbo craws. So the Z-Man Turbo Craws, it's a realistic red claw crustacean presentation. Uh, got that segmented looking body, the small legs out the side and those large claws and some antennae at the front here. So being buoyant, 10 times tough Elastec material, when it's at rest on the bottom, if you are fishing it on a standard jig head, those claws will get up and wave around and attract fish. But those claws also, when it's on the move, you can twitch it and those claws will kick and shake like it's trying to get away from the predatory species, or you can buzz it and they'll flap across the surface. Like a frog, but with that larger surface area, surface area and that softer, flatter claw, it can actually paddle and work at a slower speed. So it's really cool if you wanna slow that surface presentation down. <clears throat> Four inch turbo crawls in a stack of cool colors from your pearls and your darker colors like the dark melon red and, and mud bug and green pumpkin and that through to some kookier, brighter colors like that green pumpkin orange and that sort of thing. So a lot of colors available in there as well. The key thing to remember, like our TRD bugs and also our crusties, out of the packet, you'll see the two claws are joined with a small section across the middle. Basically that's designed so that they shoot correctly in the mold and you get that full claw. But once out of the packet, you can see when we separate those claws, we get a lot more movement and a lot more action out of that plastic. So all we do is simply grab that joining piece, pop it off from one claw, pop it off from the other claw, dispose of it in the bin, and we're ready to rock and roll with that turbo claws and get the most out of it. <clears throat> so where do the guys fish it and how do they fish it? Down south, it is a killer on the Murray Cod and also on the bass and one of our pro guys down there, he gets up through the gorge country and that sort of thing and uses this plastic in a variety of ways. If he wants to catch numbers of bass, he'll rig it on a 2.0 headlocks jig head and that's got that jig head exposed out of the top. You can, you can turn over the numbers of fish, catch plenty of bass on it. If he wants to catch the bigger bass out of a pool, switch to a weedless hook, a 2.0 chin locks or chin locks SWS or snake locks and that 2.0 with the plastic, the hook sitting against the top of the plastic, you can often weed out a lot of those smaller fish and the bigger bass in the pool love this plastic so they climb all over it. So you catch big, big bass on this plastic. Around Brisbane where we are here, the Gold Coast guys absolutely love it on the jacks. It's deadly on the jacks in the daytime and also deadly on the jacks at night, especially around bridges and stuff where it creates a really cool silhouette in the lights. Lots of movement and that that draws the attention of the fish and it triggers that strike. So a cool presentation on the jacks, lots of jacks being caught on it. Also dynamite on the floodies and those sorts of things. And again on the bass and freshwater species as well, Saratoga and that, love them. And then as you move north, of course, more jacks, barra, other species that get on there as well. But I've seen pretty much, oh, most species caught on it that, that are medium to large species. It's caught reef, reef species, it's caught all sorts of things. So let's have a look at rigging it. Our standard way of rigging it would be on a headlocks jig head if you're fishing in open water. So that's a headlocks HG, HD jig head. And it fits really well on a 2.0, 3.0 and 4.0, depending on the species that you're targeting. So down south, some of the bass guys like it on a 2.0. And the cool thing is because all that claw movement and that head section the hook is coming out of that head section where all the movement is. So the bulk of your strikes will come right around that head. So they have no problem finding the hook. So the 2.0 for smaller fish with smaller mouths or smaller species, step up to the 3.0. The 3.0 is a common one for flathead and saltwater stuff and also for chasing larger bass and that sort of thing. And then step up to the 4.0 for your barra, Murray cod and those sorts of species as well. The body design on this plastic also allows the body to be cut down if you do want to present a smaller profile with a load of movement. So you can trim that back. And some guys like to trim it back as well when they're fishing it as a spinnerbait trailer or a jig trailer. But it's an excellent jig and spinnerbait trailer because of all that movement in there and that realistic yabby or red claw or blue claw type profile with those claws that attract fish and trigger strikes. 
So Headlocks HD 2030 and 4.0 fits nicely on those. When we step to weedless rigging, it rigs well on a chin locks. So our chin locks has that locking mechanism to lock that 10 times tough elastic plastic in place so it doesn't slide down your hook. And by weedless rigging, our plastic is sitting right up under the hook there. So it minimal snagging. And with the chin locks unweighted, it allows you to run it over the top of stumps and weed and all sorts of structure, and then hopefully get the fish that are living in amongst that structure. So you can buzz it or you can pause it. Say on a 3.0, for example, it'll float on the 3.0, so you can buzz it across the surface and draw those aggressive strikes. If the fish are a bit more finicky, you can work it with a couple of punches or a couple of twitches and pause it. And it'll, and it'll drop back down like that and its claws will come up. And then when you rip it, it'll dive down. So punch, punch, dive down. Those claws kick like a frog getting away, and then when you pause it, it'll slowly float back up again. So that's a deadly way to present it, especially if you wanna, don't wanna move it too far, you wanna keep it right in that strike zone, underneath the structure, you know, overhanging vegetation, or right in a pocket, get it right in there. Uh, so again, rigs on a 2.0, the southern guys like it on a 2.0 when they're chasing those bass and that, gorge country bass or big river bass. 2.0, 3.0 fits beautifully, that's my favorite way of rigging it, it's on a 3.0. And then a 4.0, no problem again, if you wanna step up the jig head size, give that little bit more hook clearance and bigger hook for things like Barra, Murray Cod. You could go bigger again, but a 4.0 if it's pretty nicely in there. So 2.0, 3.0, And in that chin locks, that's for our surface fishing, for buzzing it right across the top. If we wanna slowly sink it down in those snags, just give it that real natural, slow, horizontal fall, then a chin locks SWS is the go with that belly weight. So again, we've got our chin lock to lock it onto the hook and we've got a belly weight on this occasion, and that belly weight gives it that slow, natural horizontal fall. So it allows us to flick it into a tree, flick it in under vegetation, flick it right against structure, and let it slowly sink down right near the structure, holding right in that strike zone. Watch your line, boom, set the hook if the fish grabs it. Otherwise, we can start to work it away. Again, we can get the rod tip up, and we can buzz it across the surface if we like, with that extra weight allowing us more casting distance or we can pause it, we can pulse it, we can buzz it, we can hop it under the water and move it around, let those claws do their work and keep it in the, in the face of the fish longer. So again, we're on that 2.0, 3.0 or the 4.0, depending on our target species, with that belly weight on there. And you can, depending on the hook size, you can get some different belly weights to suit your application as well. So yeah, really, really good barra presentation on that or tight country bass fishing and that sort of thing. So check out that Chinox SWS. And then if we really want to get it down deep quicker in amongst structure, snags, fish bridge pylons, fish deep timber, whatever we want to do, we can step up to our snake locks. So our snake locks has that head weight. We can clip that head weight off and on, which allows us to switch hook sizes and head weights as required. So some guys like to have a kit with a selection of snake locks head weights, a selection of chin locks, and they just switch them off and on as required. So again, our 2.0, our 3.0 and our 4.0 fit that beautifully and that allows us that weedless presentation with a bit more weight and we can regulate that weight. At the same time, I can clip this off and I could buzz that across the surface a few times, see if I can stir something up. If not, I can then clip the weight on and fish it, and fish it deeper. So multiple options with that one jig head. So that's the Snake Locks 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 get that thing down there and that's gonna sit on the bottom with that head weight and those claws are gonna get up there and attract predators and trigger strikes, which is awesome. That's what we're all about. Uh, additional weedless factor, what you can do. So we've just got that plastic resting against the underside of the hook. Boom, a fish can bite it, clear it, away you go. Because that elastic material is super soft and flexible, clears really, really easy. What you can do, you can actually pinch the plastic, pull it forward and tuck the hook point into the plastic also. So the actual hook point is pinned, buried just slightly in the plastic, and that'll allow you to really run it through even heavier cover. Fish hits it, and because it's so soft and flexible, it clears. So that just gives you even more weedless factor with that Z-Man 4-inch turbo crawls. So there you go, that's a few different ways that you can rig and fish it. Scent-wise, I always scent up my plastics. Procure, scent. It's a, it's a gel scent, so it stays on really well. I apply it from the head and slide it right down the plastic and apply it every 30 to 50 casts. 
depending on what I'm, where I'm fishing. Or if I catch a fish, I'll generally put a little bit more on. Or if it's really slow, I'll put a little bit more on. But in terms of scents, there's a couple for the freshwater. Aniseed, excellent for the freshwater. And also crawfish. We're fishing with a, a crawfish imitation, so crawfish is a suitable scent. Otherwise, our you know, salt water, we might run a shrimp or an inshore salt water. And those scents will help to mask foreign odors like sunscreen, fuel, and they will also attract fish and trigger strikes because they're loaded with real ground bait. Also powerful amino acids, bite stimulants, and UV enhancement as well. So there you go. If you haven't tried the Z-Man four inch turbo crawlers, you're probably missing out. It'll attract a lot of species. Stay tuned, because I'm gonna go and throw them around for some barra soon. So hopefully some footage to come of that as well. So check them out. Z-Man four inch turbo crawlers in a bunch of colors. Rig them on a 2.0, 3.0 or 4.0 Headlocks HD jig head for open country. Otherwise, if you're in a round structure, check out that 2.0, 3.0 or 4.0 weedless option in a Chinlocks, a Chinlocks SWS or a Snakelocks jig head. Get out there, get into a few. Cheers.